Happy Turkey Day, everybody, if you celebrate that. And what better way than to celebrate this amazing, delicious food that we have here on this table than to watch a wonderful video titled Community Notes Violating People entitled VTuber Gets What She Deserves by Rev Says Desu because what better way to enjoy our food than to watch people get community noted for our pleasure. And with that, let's get right into it. Hey, what's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to another edition Hi, of Community Notes Violating People. For those who are not familiar, Community mm -hmm. Notes are a communal fact check system on Twitter where qualified users can leave a note underneath a tweet providing a- I love how he just called it a fact check system. Like, <laughs> it's like fact check by like actual people. So it's not like, it kind of, I don't know why I wanted to say it's like Wikipedia. It's nothing like Wikipedia, but it's basically just people who can- post like the actually type of comments additional context and if that note gets enough upvotes from the community it is publicly applied to the tweet often leading to funny results now as we get into this video i got to point out this account here this is where we used to get a lot of the screenshots mm -hmm. of community notes being applied to various tweets on you know i actually think i've seen this account a couple of times on my timeline like but i I don't remember it being like a community note thing. I feel like I've seen, I feel like I've seen memes from this account. Fortunately, it seems that they have switched owners on this account. Oh. And now all they do is post engagement bait slop. Like okay, so I, I was right. So, uh, cause I was like, I I didn't know they posted like actual community notes. Like I thought that was just like a shit post type of thing. And like, yeah, I've seen the memes, which is kind of crazy to think about that. Um. <laughs> The amount of times I've seen like the same memes that this account will post because, you know, it's essentially like slop, like the best way to get engagement is to take this slop type of content, like this meme content and then like post it. And it's because it makes so much money. This and on top of that, they've gotten hit with notes themselves. I mean, wait, 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 you're telling me the community note <laughs> Twitter account got community noted okay mighty have fallen but look at this tweet what a weird tweet the doj has launched a crusade against successful companies like visa and mastercard sending a message <sighs> that success <sighs> in america is punished and the note says uh, this is a straw man these companies are being investigated slash sue it was a straw man straw man is that i think that's like a illogical fallacy is that what that is a straw man argument is a logical fallacy where someone misrepresents their opponent's position by creating a distorted, exaggerated version of it, making it easier to attack and refute instead of addressing the actual argument being made. Essentially building a straw man that is easily knocked down like a scarecrow rather than engaging with the real opponent's view viewpoint. So basically it's like Dextero. For various antitrust practices. I don't know what kind of weird arc someone's going through where they're defending Visa <laughs> and MasterCard, but this is a very strange tweet. Not only is it breaking mm, the gimmick and the purpose weird arc. of the account, it's being hit with the feature it dedicated mm. itself to in the first place. Uh, as we talked about on this channel, Visa and MasterCard are very manipulative. They like to mm -hmm. basically threaten mm -hmm. to remove their payment services from various- Oh, here we go. Yep, them and PayPal, man. Oh gosh, we live in a world where if you draw art, you have to be so fearful now because I am not only a part of like the VTuber scene, but I'm also part of like a lot of the art community because, you know, I love my artists. And yeah, I see a lot of like payment issues constantly happening. It's why I kind of have given up on art myself because- Trying to do payment systems like this with Visa, MasterCard, or PayPal in general is just a nightmare, dude. Like, we have something called VGen, which is kind of like a more VTuber anime style of, like, Fiverr. <laughs> so we kind of have something like that, which is, a, I guess, more stable for payment options. And then we have Kofi, which is another way to do it. But it is a nightmare trying to do anything that's payment related with, like, especially art commissions or even video commissions then for that matter. Platforms, and they're often targeting a lot of Japanese platforms, particularly mm -hmm, of in course. the art community. And it's a very strange thing. They pretty much force these companies to remove 
artwork mm-hmm. from their platform. And- Actually, a little side note of this. Um, sorry, I keep interrupting, but this this is an interesting side note with Visa and Mastercard. I remember a couple of Japanese artists a while back talking about how people would like commission art from them, like Japanese artists, and they would use like Visa or Mastercard, and then they would try to flag the commission as fraudulent, basically scamming the artists where they could like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally didn't authorize like this purchase and visa and like the MasterCard. They're just like, yeah, you know what? That sounds about right. We're just going to take that back. And I think, I think I might have to, you might have the community note this, everybody in the comments, but I think a lot of Japanese artists and like other businesses are starting to decline visa and MasterCard payments. I'm not... Don't quote me on that entirely, but I, I think there has been a movement, or at least a rumor, so to say, that this is starting to happen because of just how much false flagging has been happening and just payment issues. I mean, anything that's like beyond uh, consensual handholding, okay? It's a consensual very hand thing, Consensual handholding? Breath. We don't do handholding here. That's cringe. Handholding is cringe. Here they are defending I'm Visa kidding. and MasterCard. Strange arc, but they got hit with a note and it's quite frankly deserved. Now we're going to move on to the next arc of this. You draw anime women, you're bad and you're revoked and you're stupid. And if you handled, you're cringe and stupid and bad. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> this video, a very... Un- gum pie. What is your favorite gump and re regarded chuba? What does that mean? What is a regard? What does that mean? I, I don't understand. Unhinged meltdown in the VTubing scene, which is saying something if it's uh, more unhinged than normal. You know, I never really understood why so many VTubers constantly like to just uh, be sh- making some weird comments on Twitter and then they end up in like a Rev Says Desu video. Like, I don't know. I feel like if your goal is to grow as a creator and stuff, maybe... This isn't the best type of uh, marketing scheme you could be doing. I think I've seen at least like five different VTubers get community noted. So I'm very interested to see what this person's getting community noted for. So now we're going to talk about this VTuber named Gumpy. Gumpy. As you can see, uh, they follow zero people. That's red flag number one. Why- <laughs> Rev, what do you mean that's a red flag? Like, they don't follow anybody. That's red flag number one. Actually, how is that even possible? Well, no, that's not true. You could definitely grow an audience by not following anyone. That is possible. It's a... Hmm. Maybe they followed and then unfollowed everyone. Maybe they were following people originally. I don't know. Why is that a red flag, Rev? I don't really oh. know. It just tends to uh, check out. But you can see... Uh, <laughs> Well, that answers my question. It's a couple thousand followers over the past 24 hours due to some controversial tweets That's a they lot. have made. So let's begin with this right here. No, no. What? Oh, no. Oh, God. No, no. That's not the word I think it is, right? Right? This is... This is... Re- oh, God. I know I was about to explain all this, but like... I, I didn't realize just how bad... It has become in the VTuber sphere where people are so desperate to like grow that they will just say some really evil stuff just to get likes and attention. I kind of wonder like when you make posts like these, are you really growing as a creator, especially if you lost like over a thousand followers? Like at what point do you have to sit there and consider like, hmm, maybe I'm maybe I need to change and like do something a bit more constructive rather than destructive and seen some stuff like this a very dramatic tweet saying i'm getting r-worded by the vtuber community god please help me so you can see this is the first of them why is gum pie's oshi mark which if you don't know what an oshi mark is it's like this fun little like emoji icon that a lot of vtubers will use to let their fans kind of associate like i'm a i'm a fan of like this vtuber and you use like the oshi mark why is gum pie's oshi mark like a rope many notes that have been applied to her account over the past 24 hours and the note why says is it a rope? obviously she is not being assaulted in any sort of a way rather she's facing criticism for a series of controversial tweets she has made beginning with this one right here so it's a call out post targeting this artist named Kuz. okay wait i have seen this i have seen this okay that's why this person's name looks so familiar i was like well, i don't remember seeing it. i've seen this oh my gosh the kusa person oh no this if this is what i think it is 
sit down. You're in for quite a ride. This is this is actually kind of sad. Saying, hey, please don't allow this person in your VTuber Discord. He goes to VTuber Discord to Discord to steal a person's character to make into a plushie. He has profited off of Gumpie, and I don't have any association or shared profits with him. Uh, that's <sighs> First of all, it's cringe to refer to yourself by your name. I'm just, I'm, for my third person people out there, but also it's even more cringe to refer to yourself in third person and then be like, not only does my model, but I, the person behind the model, don't support this. That's two entities that don't support these actions. But like Kusa, Kusa does like some really cute plushies. Like just to give some context, I'm sure Rev will probably explain it too, but Kusa makes handmade plushies, beautifully crafted handmade plushies. And a lot of it's just fan made stuff. And I believe Kusa's made a lot of stuff for Phase Connect. Red flag number two, when someone refers to themselves unironically in the third person, but you can see- <laughs> both have the same sentiment about that <laughs> okay look if you refer to yourself a third person like that's fine you can do what you want to do with your content it's just if you're gonna do that maybe don't do it in like a call out post because it's on that same cringe level as the girl who role played as like a yandere trying to cancel somebody in that one video like it it's on that kind of level next note here saying this user is falsely accusing LPT underscore Kuza of being a scammer. In reality, Kuza is an indie toy maker from Vietnam yep. known for making handmade custom order yep. plushies. Now, we'll hear an actual statement from the artist in a second, but to give you the bare bones context, essentially someone commissioned Kuza to make a plushie of Gumpai's VTuber model. And after they got done with the commission, they had some extra plushies left over. Mm -hmm. So they decided to sell them to her community on Discord. That's it. Okay, so imagine like making some handmade plushies, you know, because you got commission for it and you had some extra. So you make like a couple of extra plushies. And you're like, hmm, would anybody in this person's community be interested in like getting these? I think that's like, one, that's a really good use of material. Um, And two, I feel like when you have fan made content a lot of i want to say creators because i don't think it's necessarily vtubers i think like a lot of creators can get kind of possessive over their oc um especially if they feel like they don't make a lot of money with their own ip or their own merchandise and they see someone else is making money and they perceive because i don't know if this kusa person is making more money than Gumpai. But I'm assuming that this that Gumpai is perceiving that Kusa is making more money than her because if you think about it, why else would you be upset over someone like selling plushies of you? Especially if you're saying like it's like a whole money thing. Like I it if it's just a couple of bucks or something, like maybe ten or twenty dollars. Are, are you really that pressed over like 10 or 20 dollars is, is it really like that big of a deal which tells me like I, I don't know there has to be some kind of insecurity festering in there somewhere at least that's how i am perceiving this situation right now that's it that's what initiated this whole entitled meltdown let's see some more tweets just to give you a, an idea of what we're dealing with here yes, so spoon feed she would me. actually mock the artist in the replies saying this he's making AliExpress Temu tier plushies of my character. Bro, not the AliExpress Timu stuff. No, 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 no. This doesn't even look like a Timu product. What are you talking about? This looks, this actually looks like something I'd see at an anime convention. I'm not gonna lie. This straight up looks like something I would see at like Katsukan, Orakan, Anime Boston, like New York Comic Con. This, this is the same quality in my opinion. It's not bad. LOL. The eyes aren't even correct. Gumpie's eye color is pink, not effing orange. Again I'm sorry, but this looks red to me. Um, my eye is pink and I also have a... What color are my eyes? Anyways, it doesn't look... Oh, I think she's talking about this little part right here. Oh, okay. Again, he just goes server to server just to profit off of other VTubers characters well he has mm. every right to make these plushies of characters he is allowed to do that mm -hmm. but on top of that shaming this person who made a plushie that they were commissioned to create is wild imagine commissioning someone 
to make a plushie of your Oshi. And if you are new to VTB, Oshi is someone who you really idolize and like someone who like a VTuber that you just really look up to and you want to support so much. Like it, it is a, to have an Oshi is an honor and to be someone's Kami Oshi, like the epitome of like, this is my favorite VTuber of all time. That is such a huge honor. So imagine, imagine that this person here is someone's Oshi, okay? Because it's true. This person is someone's Oshi. Imagine you wanted to commission a plushie of your Oshi. And obviously your Oshi doesn't sell plushies of um, themselves. So you commission someone else to. It's a fan thing. It's not like you're going to take that plushie and resell it for higher value. Oh, you know, scalpers might if it, you know, but I highly doubt that's the situation here. This is something very personal and special to you. And then you're feeling really happy about this. And then out of nowhere, you see this. You see this, your Oshi shaming the person who made it, making fun of it. And it's like, I I feel like if that was my Oshi speaking to me or about me or about my work like that, I, I would just feel so crushed. Now, I don't want to come off as like holier than thou or uh, Mr. Wholesome Chungus here, but like Wholesome as a Chungus. content creator, as someone who's had official merch lines, also unofficial and fan-made merch, I don't think there's anything cooler as a content creator than people making merch for you, right? Or you yeah, I know. I, I actually agree with that. If someone wanted to make a plushie of me, I would love that. Like, I don't have any merch, at least not right now, because I'm I'm too small to ha to have any merchandise of myself um at the moment. But maybe that can change in the future. We'll see. We'll see. But but still, even if like, look, if all of you wanted to make some fan merch of me and sell it or whatever, I, that I don't care. I'm fine with it. I really am not upset. In fact, I think it's very sweet to want to think of me. And if you wanted to make a plushie of me, that you know. That is a really cool thing, and I would be honored. Even wanting merch related to your channel, that's a very cool thing to see. It is! And someone like this having an entitled meltdown over someone making plushies they were commissioned to make is just very bizarre. Mm -hmm. But they would continue, and they would no. say this. It would have been a completely different story if he mailed me the extra plushies, but no, he's- well, Okay, first of all, shut up. Not you, Rev, but shut up. Okay, like, what do you mean? You literally says bro lives in Vietnam. There's no way you struggle with extra cash. First of all, that's racist. Uh, second of all, if you wanted this person to mail you the extra plushies, you'd have to mail them to you from Vietnam. And depending on where you live, that's probably hella expensive. And this makes my blood boil because, like, imagine being upset over, like, three or four plushies, okay? Like, it's not like this person is doing, you know, the anime con thing where they just bulk order stuff from AliExpress, by the way, and then they try to sell it from a higher market price, right? No, this is like handmade, hand, like crafted type of stuff. And you're upset that they didn't mail you the extras. Like, that's so weird. So profit oriented that he decided to sell knockoffs to people in my community who have no idea when their shit will get shipped. Bro lives in okay. Vietnam. There's no way he is struggling for extra cash in that country with his business. You can sell orange juice with coffee shots for $1 and live off of that for a week in that effing country. Okay, why don't you go do that then? Why don't you go move to Vietnam and sell orange juice with coffee shots for $1? Let's see how far you get in life doing that. Like, that is such a terminally online thing to say like you don't know what is going on in someone else's life like clearly you haven't done a lot of research in vietnam and like I'm not saying like i have per se but the fact that like you're assuming so much about like this country and this person's like nationality and correlating it to oh this person is so profit oriented that he decided to sell knockoffs like that is like much of a stretch like you're jumping through so many mental hoops over this over this like profit margin that you believe this person is making especially when you say very tone deaf and straight up ignorant things like how one dollar you could live off of that for like a week and it's like please uh be more respectful for other people's like living situations i i feel like you know if you're focusing this hard on someone's i guess business which doesn't really feel like that it feels like this is more of a passion thing that kusa does i i feel like when you have to make stuff 
that's handmade like this, you have to really just love it for the craft. Because if the person was really making it for the business, I feel like he would have a much different business model personally. So th it's just it's just weird how there's so much like hyperfixation on this whole quote unquote profit oriented, which, by the way, wouldn't that make you profit oriented because you're focusing on it? And, like, mm. So it wouldn't be a public VTuber meltdown without a dash of racism added into that. Yeah. But also they would say this and getting hit with another note. I'll always get <laughs> someone's like Rev, put me in the video. <laughs> That's uh, interesting. <laughs> over by the VTuber VTubing community, no matter what. I get my design slash character R worded for profit while not even getting anything for free. Okay, that's wild to say. That is that is a wild, wild thing to say. Holy cow, that is wild. Wow. Um over what, like 20, 30 bucks? Like, it can't be that much money. If there's just like three or four plushies, or maybe 50 bucks, 50 bucks, we're, we're, we're saying these kind of things. Many such cases, and then this user replies saying, Rev, put me in the video. You got it, Chief. There you are. But anyways, yeah. So really, there's no like nice way of going about this, but like, who are you? Like, what is this <laughs> sense of entitlement? That who are you? <laughs> card <laughs> oh, the card. okay no i agree i don't think this is just like a vtuber thing i i genuinely think this person is just being really scummy like i am not trying to completely bash on this person but it's kind of hard to not be upset over what's being said here because as someone who supports artists, as someone who likes a lot of fan-made merch, I buy a lot of fan-made merchandise at anime conventions. And you better believe that a lot of those booths are not sharing any of those profit margins with any of the creators they're making fan art of. And so I feel like fan art really helps thrive the VTuber community because if someone gives a shit about you enough to want to make art of you, clearly you mean something to that person. So to just be so like resentful about this is like you're literally like shitting on the hand that feeds you. It, it's like, I don't know, it's just a whole weird situation. People are profiting off of your likeness. Uh, spoiler alert, the artist sold four plushies, <laughs> four plushies. And this is what this person. I almost just choked on my tea. Oh, my God. Four plushies, four plushies. Four plushies. I cannot, like, you're using such a strong language over four plushies. ...is seething about. It's very, very strange, but they would continue on to not only attack the artist further, but also no. shame anyone from her community who actually bought one, saying... This is, you should never talk down on the people who support you. Like, you should never do that. What better way to lose support than to talk down on people who choose to support you? That is, wow. And don't get me wrong, like, I know there are some people in everyone's communities that, like, are not always the best, like, supporters, but, like, they're still choosing to spend their time with you. And like, that is something you should be grateful as a creator. Like we would never be here doing what we're doing without the wonderful support of our community. And if they want to buy a fan made plushie of you, guess what? It's their money and their life. They can do whatever the f they want. This LOL. I'm sorry to like, what is up with this gaslighting? Those who bought the plushie, but it's kind of your fault. It wasn't even vetted by me and it's poorly made. Like, what were you expecting? Uh this person must have smoked a huge fatty and then just went on a complete rant. Like, I don't know. This is, I don't, <laughs> the language that is typed in this is like, <laughs> it's not coherent. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Well, let's talk about the artist. Okay, yeah. I'll put a link to their account. Oh, if look at that little icon. Hatsune Miku kitty. That's so cute. Ah, I should go all follow Kusa. I'm going to go follow Kusa in the description if you want to go give them a follow and yeah. check out their commission work. But uh, yeah, you can see Kusa here. They would make an official statement responding to everything. And you can see it has 32,000 likes, 2.3 oh million my. views. This is- That is actually insane. So, okay, little fun fact about analytics here, cause I'm a little bit of a actually nerd with analytics. <laughs> um, So 2.3 million impressions means that the, it had gotten pushed out on the algorithm 
past its target audience because the VTuber sphere, especially on Twitter, is not that large in comparison. So it probably got pushed out not only to VTuber Twitter, it most likely got pushed out to artist Twitter, which is much, much bigger. And then adjacently from artist Twitter, you have people who are in the cosplay scene as well as conventions and anime in general. So it does not surprise me that it would hit something that big. That means something, again, it goes back to the sentiments that I was talking about earlier. As someone who is an artist and supports other artists and fan art, this hits home to beyond VTubing. You're you're literally targeting like con goers who buy fan merchandise. You're literally targeting artists who make the fan merchandise. So yeah, you're hitting a lot of boxes here to go viral a universally supported post right here. So they say this, I got commissioned to make a gun pie plushie. I still have some plushie body after I finish it. Then I go ask everyone on SV if they wanted it. I only sold three. That only four gun pie plushie ever sold. Mm. I'm sorry for not thinking it through. I only thought people would like to have it. And then they go on to apologize and say all mm. these things, which my response and pretty much everybody's response to this is you have nothing to apologize for, for. Real? you did literally nothing wrong yeah. and you can see these are just some of the replies this is the first section of reply look look at all this look at this oh my god Flork commented i'll commission some dolls i love Flork. Flork is so amazing like Flork is one of the nicest people i have ever had the pleasure of talking to and so like this is what i mean it's like it is crazy. And like, look at how many other people have had like their plushies made by them. Because again, Kusa's made a lot of plushies for Face Connect too. And like even Bao was commenting and Shadow was commenting. And this VTuber uh, memes account, interesting. Um, but it's so fascinating how many people come together to support this person because yeah, they didn't do anything wrong. And you can see some big names, both indie and agency VTubers praising this artist yeah. and also talk about how they've had a good experience and they appreciate the plushies they've gotten commissioned from this artist. And yeah, I mean, what a weird hill to mm -hmm. die on. I mean, this is yeah. like your first impression to everybody in the VTubing scene is being an entitled brat melting down <laughs> over someone making a fan made plushie oh. of your VTuber model. And here's their commission prices also, if you want to check See, it out. What did I say? About 30 bucks? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a little bit higher than what I had thought because it was like 20, but still $35. $35! It takes one to four weeks. And look how cute these little crochet plushies are. Oh, I want the cinnamon Romico one. I love that. Oh my gosh. I, I want, oh my gosh. I want to commission this person for a My Melody plushie. I want, oh my God, that would be so cute. I love My Melody. My Melody is a crybaby because, you know, she matches me in a perfectly, but I also like cinnamon roll a lot too. Do you know, did you actually, did you know that cinnamon roll is a boy? Did you know that? But yes, I I love this and oh my gosh, I, I want to commission it. I need money. Someone give me money so I can commission plushies from Kusa. Uh, definitely, again, support the artists. They don't deserve any of this. But let's wrap up this arc of the video with this a, arc. Final <laughs> set of notes, a two time feature here. Two notes apply to the same Yo. series of interactions here where Gumpai says, Hi, you can support me by the new Uwu Market merch drop no. on November 25th at 3 p.m. I do no. get 20% profits. Pretty good. At least it gets profits. Uh, at least I get profits then compared mm. to this fellow where I get absolutely 0%. So talking about profit-oriented earlier, by the way, so who is the real profit-oriented person here? Okay, first of all, how is Uwu Media still working with this person? I feel like this is kind of bad publicity on their part. Granted, you can't always vet every talent that you work and collaborate with. Unfortunately, people don't show their true colors and still put under a certain amount of pressure, which according to this person, the pressure is making about Let's see if the plush shoe is about $35. 35 times four is it's about $140, all right? Not including like whatever the shipping is or whatever, or like tax, if this person charges tax. $140 triggered this person enough to explode on social media. Just, I don't know, as a company, I, I don't know if Uwu Media is gonna continue working with them. No clue, but over $140. And by the way, if this was being charged, let's say they, um, Uwu Media was charging it for the same price, that whole 20% thing, 
this person <laughs> this person it let's if they sold four plushies for the same price as Kusa was charging it for thirty five dollars and this person gets twenty percent of it. This person would only be getting $28. This person would only be getting $28. She, she's pressed about $28. I, fo I can't. That's, I don't really know what's going on with that potential merch drop, but uh, there's a lot of people talking about that. We'll see if that actually happens or not, but that's going to conclude this arc. Of I the can't video. believe it. Yeah, what a mess. Let's continue on with some more standard <sighs> notes. Uh, speak Listen, man, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? <laughs> speaking of entitlement here, here's a tweet saying, streaming is way harder than a 9 to 5. <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> Please tell me this person isn't being unironic. I think this person is being unironic. This is crazy. That That is crazy. And now, if this was like a shit post, I'd be like, yeah, oh yeah, totally. Streaming's harder than year nine to five, but no. Be mad about it. And the note says, this post is engaging in engagement farming or rage baiting, which violates X's rules. That's the catch all that gets applied to a lot of engagement mm. bait and rage bait content like this. But uh I don't know. I feel like. Streaming is only hard when you're bad at it. Like, I, I've been streaming for eight years on Twitch, and I suck at it, which is why, to me, yeah, streaming is kind of hard, because I, I suck at it. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm honest. I, I'm, a, I'm a bad streamer, which is why I make YouTube videos, because I'm a much better YouTuber. And so I want to get back into streaming. I feel like the hardest thing about streaming, at least for me, was being consistent, because, like, I have really bad ADHD and sometimes I just get distracted and then I just forget to stream entirely. I've been getting a lot better at it and I do want to come back to streaming, but like that's like kind of the hardest part is just remembering to go live and like not being afraid to go live. Other than that, like streaming itself, sure, if you if you don't know technology and you got to set up OBS and like the plugins and stuff, I guess that's hard, but guess what? There's YouTube tutorials about that. Like it's it's not that hard. Uh, yeah, this is a losing argument. Anytime someone brings up the, the whole streaming is harder than nine to five, you're already catching an L if you're going with that. Like, yes, there's unique challenges to being a streamer mm -hmm. or content creator, you know, back working a regular job. I didn't have to worry about getting death threats because of my yep. opinions regarding. And I will say I've seen Rev talk about getting death threats a lot on Twitter. It's it's actually kind of fascinating how when you are a streamer or just a content creator in general, because it's not like being a YouTuber makes you immune to like this stuff. I get a lot of nasty comments on my videos all the time. And some of it is people taking me out of context or I get people who will hyper fixate on one single sentence or word I said in a video and disregard everything else that I had said in the entire video. And so that is something that you take a risk on when you become a content creator. And I feel like content creation or just any kind of job, it doesn't matter what job it is. Every type of job has their own unique challenges that you have to deal with. And you know, what's interesting is that I feel like when it comes to like streaming, a lot of people just think you just go live and then you play games and like that's it, which is one tenth of what the pie of the content creation sphere is. But a lot of it does come down to just being good at marketing. That is like the hardest part about being a content creator is being good at marketing. Because if you don't know how to market yourself, one, no one knows who the hell you are. And two, no one cares. Like video games and, and silly stuff like that. But there's no possible way a reasonable person actually thinks streaming is way harder rev this is twitter you think there are reasonable persons on this on this app like come on ain't nobody's reasonable on twitter than a nine to five and if you do actually believe that streaming is harder than a nine to five i would just say keep that to yourself because there's no universe where you're gonna <laughs> say that publicly and not get shamed for it true but let's move on to the next no that's actually kind of true and you know what's interesting about that just to like Add a little tidbit. So I do VTubing and YouTube part-time and then I also work at like another job part-time. And I will tell you like I commute 30 minutes to my job there and then 30 minutes back. So in total, I'm doing about an hour amount of commuting and it sucks sometimes because there's always traffic and there's a lot of car accidents. There's always car accidents and the way some people drive is so scary. I had to get like a dash camera because a couple of years ago I got into a very car, very bad car accident because somebody had T-boned me like a, a 
teenager was texting and driving and she thought she could zoom through a red light straight up was like oh yeah i can beat this red light completely t-boned me almost killed my passenger in the car and i got a lot of like damage to like my back and i had to go through physical therapy my passenger was is alive by the way they had to also go to a lot of physical therapy and now they have like an enlarged disc like they they completely got their back ruined because this teenager literally said oh i thought i could make the light and i was so mad that i didn't have like a dash camera or a recording of that and the reason why that is ingrained into my head is because i was so angry and the end of the result of that was that no fault was found because there's no cameras around by like the traffic lights there's no cameras the one intersection that we were at had no cameras apparently and ever since then i got a dash camera because i am so scared of getting into another car accident and something really bad happening to me i'm lucky that i was able to go through physical therapy and like kind of get my back and like my legs to function but i still have some back pain it's not always gonna go away and it's just it's scary so having to do that every single day to go to a job is already terrifying for me and then when i get to my actual job I promise i will get off my soapbox in a moment here but the type of work that i do um i do a lot of creative work so I'm making a lot of different like programs, curriculums. I'm trying to implement that kind of stuff. And I do a lot of tournaments and all sorts of like stuff, right? And so my job, a lot of people that I work with do not like me because I have to do a lot of stuff that revolves around video games and esports. And the people that I work with are very old and like they're very like they have this mindset that esports isn't like a real thing and like it's just gaming so they don't like that i'm in this space creating things that i was hired to do by the way and so i deal with a lot of like ageism i deal with a lot of unnecessary remarks about my title about my job field about the things that i do i'm constantly told how i don't do enough and how the stuff that i do isn't really like that great and yes this is these are like actual remarks i get from like my coworkers, and it's been really hard especially lately like this past week alone has been very difficult because i'm constantly just being ridiculed for everything that i do even by like my superiors and it's it's been like a whole situation that I can't quite get into details with it because I don't want to like you know start crying in the video it's just been very difficult whereas when I come home and I get to stream and I get to make videos I feel like I can actually be myself I feel like I won't be shamed for talking about the things that I like I'm not going to be put down constantly sure i get a couple of mean comments on my youtube videos and you know what i do when i see that i laugh and then i move on you can't really do that when you're in an office space and you're being ridiculed in front of a bunch of people and you have to just sit there and eat it it's like a completely different type of difficulty like if someone's being mean to you online you can just log off you can delete those comments you can block people it is just so much more like control you have with what you surround yourself with compared to being in an office Next note, this one says, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson were urged to make their fight bare knuckle because of low ticket sales. And the note says, the idea of making this fight bare knuckle was brought up on a single podcast, which Dexerto is using to create clickbait. Ah, there's the Dextero tweet right there, everybody. You know, Dextero. <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so i just dextero makes me laugh because they found it from a single one line of a single podcast and they're like that's our headline today everybody we're going to make this our entire personality today <laughs> the fight will be a boxing match with gloves now i actually watched this uh this fight and uh, it was very disappointing uh, besides the lag on Netflix, making it almost unwatchable, the mm. fight itself was very, very underwhelming. To say. I actually saw the fight too. I remember them talking about how after the fight, they wanted to put a, like the quote was like, they wanted to put a good show for the audience instead of like seeing, I can't remember what allegedly Logan, not Logan, God, it's really bad when I start getting the brothers confused. How could I ever forget who did what in what video? Um... It's interesting how Jake Paul was talking about how like, oh, I just didn't want to have to beat up this this old guy. I want to give like a good show to the audience. And yeah, a lot of people were just kind of mm, very meh about it. And they did not like that it was on Netflix. It was like a whole thing about it. But I will say, Dextero has a lot of really clever ways to clickbait. 
and I see it backfiring on them all the time. Say the least, and a lot of people are very disappointed. It does seem that they sold a lot of tickets. I don't think that was an issue. But anyways, let's move on to the next mm. one. Uh, Crunchyroll mm. saying today the VRM MORPG, that's a mouthful, oh, wow. Sword Art Online came to an end thanks to Kirito's efforts. Okay. All 6,147 remaining players were logged out by the system and saved. And the note says, while the remaining uh, <laughs> 6,100 players were, are still alive, roughly 300 have yet to wake up. It is currently unclear why this is the case, and the related investigation <laughs> is still on. I love how you got community noted from the anime community. <laughs> you had the weebs being like, actually, let me tell you the real lore. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Knowing. Uh, I love seeing Crunchyroll get erm actually by a note. Uh, this is a very <laughs> interesting note. Uh, fact checking Sword Art Online lore, which is uh, quite funny. But let's move on to the next note. Uh, this one says, just in, Jeff Bezos sold another 3 billion Amazon stock. Uh, looking good, <laughs> Jeff. And the note says, the person pictured is Vin Diesel oh my and not God. Jeff Bezos. And okay, is this like a, supposed to be a joke how all like bald guys look the same? Like, I don't... I don't know if that's supposed to be the joke, but <laughs> this is really funny. <laughs> Honestly, I get it. I don't even know if they're making a joke here. I mean, this is understandable. Pretty much every bald guy who's a celebrity gets <laughs> yeah. confused with Vin Diesel all the time. But uh, here's the next note uh, oh, God. saying he did it. And the note says, Donald Trump has not worn any scroll costumes, <laughs> at least publicly. The image. What do we mean by it? Well, actually, I guess that's true, right? At least publicly. We, we don't know what he's doing buying closed doors. Which above is AI generated. You know what? I'm going to dispute the note. I'm going to say this is real. This, this is, is, this real. is American politics. <laughs> it's, it's a canon event in American politics oh, right God. here. I'm going to say this actually happened because it's way funnier. There's a squirrel game that came out recently that I really want to play where you're like a squirrel with a gun. And so I think that's what it's called. I think it's called squirrel with a gun. And you're literally just a squirrel walking around like kicking people's butts and like exploding things and the fact that someone made an ai generated version of him wearing this outfit it's like i suddenly want to play that game now if it did here's another one saying oh. my friend has just ordered possibly the worst takeaway order of all time i am shocked and the note says mm. this is a recycled image and tweet and also contains an bro look at the steak ad right there that's crazy undisclosed ad uh, this is a big problem on Twitter. A lot of the big gimmick accounts and stuff, they're constantly sponsored by Stake, which I believe is a gambling platform. You want to know what's crazy about this? Stake had tried to reach out to me way before I made like this channel, like back on my main channel where I make like VTuber advice and guides. Yeah, I make tutorials on my main channel. And I remember Stake trying to reach out to me to do some kind of sponsor. And I like, I just couldn't stop laughing. It was insane. And they wanted to offer me a lot of money. And I was like, no, no, why would I have, no, why would I do that? That makes no sense. And basically, if you put stuff like that in your tweets, you're supposed sponsor to get anybody. Notes, so you can't make any more ad revenue from it because it's an undisclosed ad. But yeah, you, you already know a post is going to be slop if it has some sort of watermark like that because it's clearly just being posted for engagement. Mm -hmm. But here's the last one saying, uh, if Trump wins, I'll give $50 to everyone that engages with this post. <laughs> and the note simply says, no, they won't. <laughs> what? And we say, what is that? The community? No, what is that? <laughs> Bro, imagine... Oh, God. You know what's sad, too? They probably got a lot of engagement, too, because, you know, people are desperate for money. There's a lot of kids on social media who will literally believe anything and everything you tell them. So I wouldn't be surprised if this got a lot, a lot, a lot of engagement. And the community out is like, no, they won't. Temptation is just X. It's just Twitter. Very bizarre. But yeah, anyone yep. who makes these sorts of promises should be uh, legally bound to follow through on them. If you're gonna post stupid engagement bait like that, you gotta follow through. But anyway- I don't think we can legally bound someone who has like an NFT profile picture. I don't think there's anything there to bound, to be honest with you. With an NFT profile picture, one of those- Oh, uh, oh yeah, it is. Profile pictures in the year 2024. Like they don't got $50 to give away to people. But anyways, <laughs> that's gonna do it for this video. Another round of- That is actually kind of crazy. Wow, I, wow, I feel like I've learned a lot today. And you know what? If you subscribe, then I'll give you $100. No, I won't. <laughs> Actually, you never know. I mean, how are you ever going to find out? What am I going to get community noted?